Hello and welcome to Veterans of the Valley. I'm Tom Turbeville. When you go to the website for the Department of Veterans Affairs, you will find a list of some 368 frequently asked questions just concerning veterans benefits. And that doesn't include the questions that are not frequently asked. One question some local veterans might have is where can I go to find out about benefits or just to get primary health care? Well, that's simple. In College Station on Rock Prairie Road, right across the street from the College Station Medical Center, is a community-based outpatient clinic. Rene Ramirez, a Marine, is a veteran counselor there, and he himself a veteran who has served practically all over the world, including Somalia, Bosnia, Iraq, Afghanistan. But today his passion is to help other veterans find out answers about the benefits that they're entitled to but may not know that they are. So please welcome Rene Ramirez to Veterans of the Valley. First off, I want to make it clear, you don't work for the Veterans Administration, you work for the, vet, the Texas Veterans Commission. Yes, sir. That's right. So um, talk a little bit first off about your own service. We touched on that. I, I certainly don't want to let the show go by without you talking about your 26 years in the Marine Corps. And you just started listing places that you'd been from the East Coast, Norway, Africa, Israel, Greece, Italy, Philippines, Thailand, Australia, Japanese islands. And then as we mentioned, Somalia and Bosnia and Iraq and Afghanistan. Talk a little bit about what your service is and what you did. Well, uh, I started off as, uh, I started off after high school because I didn't know what, uh, what I really wanted to do. Right. And uh, being a Marine sounded like a good deal. So uh, I did that and uh, it uh, kind of flourished from there. My uh, first overseas tour was in Norway. Right. Where I got to live in an igloo. Which All right. was, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I learned what a cold shower really was then. It was great for a while, oh, yeah, I bet. For a little right. while, yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. um, I was a radio operator. I, uh, you know, worked on communications equipment. At the time, I was with uh, a tank, our uh, AAV battalion, right. where we worked on uh, Amtrak's, on the different communications uh, assets inside of it. Right. Uh, I, like I said, I joined out of high school in 1982. I went into the reserves because I wasn't quite sure. You know, Marines, you know, ooh. So um, after about uh, a year and a half of that, I decided, wow, this is pretty good. There's got to be, you know, there's got to be more out there. And mm -hmm. that's what I did. I went active duty. Uh, did like, uh, you know, packed up my family and took off and went and wanted to go to the station at uh, Camp Lejeune. Right. Where I spent, well, I say I spent 10 years there, but it was actually my family spent 10 years there. As you noted, I got to travel around a little bit. Exactly, and, a uh, whole lot. See the world, but uh, it, right. it was it was exciting. It was uh, it was a great twenty six years, but uh, you can't stay there forever. <laughs> no, communications though was your uh, what you did it, Somalia, Bosnia, mm -hmm. uh, Iraq, Afghanistan. I think you told me in Afghanistan uh, it involved air defense, mm -hmm. and uh, so just talk a little bit about that. You were in communications and yes, it, it, for Somalia and Bosnia, I was uh, I was on the. Uh, USS Guam. Mm -hmm. I was in charge of the watches of the uh, of the uh, Landing Force Operations Center. Uh, you know that it, it was uh, it was exciting. We got to hear what's going on everywhere at all you know at all times. The only thing that wasn't too fun was when the troops landed. I had to stay on the ship and uh, see everybody else or hear everybody go ashore. Right. So that 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 was uh, that was interesting. Uh, but that's basically what I did for Bosnia and Somalia. Mm -hmm. For uh, Afghanistan, like you mentioned, it was I provi my unit provided the uh, uh, the network pipeline for uh, for the air defense systems. Mm -hmm. uh, we made sure that they stayed up. We also provided the emails and uh, internet access and all that and nice little stuff there, and also um, controlled the firewalls right. and made sure we stayed within uh, standards so we couldn't be hacked and stuff like that. <laughs> right. Well, thank you for your service. You came to College Station in uh, June of 2007. Let's talk about, about uh, why you're here today and to talk about the, uh, the outpatient clinic in College Station, which is on Rock Prairie Road. Mm -hmm. uh, not only for the people who don't know that it's there, but the people who know that it's there but don't know exactly the services that it provides. We'll get specific in a minute, but just generally talk about the outpatient clinic and uh, the general services that it provides, that you provide, that it provides as a primary health facility. Just sort of talk about the clinic. Yeah, as you mentioned, it is a, a primary hair, uh, health uh, care clinic. Mm -hmm. uh, veterans come there to be seen for you know any normal routine uh, clinical or medical right. uh, issues that they may have, and if any kind of a specialty care is needed, the primary caregiver that they are assigned there will will uh, give them a consult to go see. Uh, 
the doctor in like Temple and stuff like that. Exactly. Uh, they also provide the flu shot annually for uh, for flu season. Uh, uh, they, that's where veterans can go to get their H1N1 also. Right. As, well, as well as the uh, regular uh, flu seasons. Right. Uh, stuff. Right. Um, so simple health care is what we're right, talking the about. They'll healthcare. draw blood there. They'll, yes, uh, sir. Uh, for tests and things like that, simple uh, health care. If it's determined that they need to see a specialist mm -hmm. that may be in Temple, that's when they're referred to Temple. Yes, sir. Right. If they're in the Temple regional area, we do have right. people that, uh, because uh, Brazos Valley or Brazos County is uh, the borderline between the Houston and Temple area, if they're, mm -hmm. say, for instance, in Navasota, right. they will be referred to Houston, the Houston to go and get their care there. Right, that's the Michael DeBakey uh, VA Medical yeah. Center there in Houston. Matter of fact, there are, for people who don't know, five uh, VA medical centers in Texas, in Bonham, Houston, Kerrville, Temple, and in Waco. Mm -hmm. And uh, so those are, the, those are the, the five there. From your desk specifically, you, you are, you're a counselor. People come in and they say, I'm a veteran, I served, here's mm -hmm. my papers, uh, what benefits do I have? Uh, especially in this day and age when uh, the economy is, is much tighter on people. People are losing jobs, people are needing the money that they're entitled to, but there's mm -hmm. an awful lot of people out there that don't know what they're entitled to, right? That's where you yes, come sir. in. Yes, sir. It's, uh, I, I, th I thought it was quite surprising that there are a lot of veterans that go back as far as World War II that didn't know that they are, that they are, uh, that they rate certain benefits. Mm -hmm. the, what I do mainly is uh, compensation and pension. Compensation is for injuries or illnesses uh, incurred uh, while in service. Right. A pension is uh, for low-income wartime veterans uh, that, or uh, age 65 because uh, the VA considers a, a veteran who is 65 or older basically 100% uh, disabled. Therefore, right. they provide uh, uh, a pension for them. And again, the pension portion is, is uh, based on income. So uh, if a veteran makes above what the uh, Congress has set, as an income, then of course uh, that pension can't be given to them. Whereas a compensation, it doesn't matter, you know, what your income is, you, you will get that. And uh, it's not only about money when it comes to compensation. Compensation is the key to getting into the VA system and getting the care that you deserve as a veteran uh, b uh, because of, you know, the injuries incurred while in service. Right. Uh, for instance, if a veteran uh, was injured, uh, broke a leg or something like that while in service, and now it's starting to bother him. Uh, if he's service connected for it, he can come right to the clinic and get treated for it. If a, uh, a new surgery is required, he can get the surgery right, uh, well, not right there in College Station, but he right. can be referred over to Temple or Houston to get the, uh, the care he needs. Right. He right. or her needs. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and we talked about the primary care, and uh, they'll make the evaluation to see if a specialty care is needed and that's when they would go to one of the uh, VA hospitals. One thing that you wanted to make sure that people realize is they do not necessarily have needed to serve in a combat zone, in right. combat, right. to right. be benefit, to, to benefit this. You talked mm -hmm. about one veteran that came that actually uh, during the Vietnam War did his service in El Paso. Right, right. And he, he had injuries from playing football. Yes, uh, I don't remember if it was actually football or baseball. Uh huh. But uh, uh, I, I thought it was football, but I think it was uh, more like baseball. But either way, it doesn't matter. It was a sport that he played. He uh, he played for the Air Force, and he yeah. traveled around, uh, and he played the right. sport. Yeah. And he had several injuries, and he was told that because he did not go overseas, that he did not rate benefits, which is not true. Mm -hmm. He did not rate any combat type benefits, but he did rate the fact that he was in during wartime because everybody does their part, whether you're serving in the rear in the States or serving overseas, somebody has to be where you're at, even mm -hmm. if, you, if you didn't serve in the actual combat zone, somebody has to be there. Right. So you rate almost everything they do, except for, you know, a actual combat type awards and stuff like that. Right. And. Uh, they can also be provided with uh, it, the benefits that are needed. In his case, he had a bunch of injuries that now because he's uh, in his 60s, uh, he's, he had difficulty walking because uh, it, the injuries that he, he sustained in, in, in while playing the sports and stuff like that. And uh, right. I told him that, yes, you do rate it. The first thing we had to do is start him, get him into the, the clinic where, you know, they have the 1010 the EZ form. 
-hmm. I had to get him in to get a, a, a primary care giver. Right. But uh, I submitted the paperwork. Uh, we worked and got the times and dates that he was seen because uh, if, if, uh, if an injury happened in a federal installation or near a federal installation and they were seen at a federal installation, then the VA can easily go there and pull the record. So it's real easy to just get the, uh, the information for that and uh, we put in a claim form for the, all that stuff. Right. And I think it's important that people realize we're talking about, let's say, people uh, uh, my age mm -hmm. who serve, who, who I did not serve in Vietnam, but people my age mm -hmm. who did serve in Vietnam. Um, you know, they're getting into their 60s, into their early 70s now. Mm -hmm. And if they did serve during that time. They're getting the normal aches and pains of any 60 and 70 year old person are going to get. Yes, they are. Yes, uh, they are. Uh, whether these aches and pains are a result of either their combat in Vietnam, that really doesn't matter. They can come to the VA clinic and, right, and right. get treated like that. And not only that, but a very important thing to talk about is about medications because they're getting more and more expensive and the right. copay is a lot less expensive, right, if they're insured. It, 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 uh, the copay for the VA is uh, less expensive. Uh, they give you 30 days uh, of uh, prescriptions. And uh, I can't quote exactly the price. I know it used to be like uh, eight dollars but mm -hmm. it may have gone up a little bit right right uh, but still a lot a lot of it is cheaper than than it is out in town oh yeah Again, so normally you're talking about insurance policies now where right. they're anywhere from uh, from 25 35 45 dollars if they're named drugs and things like that right right, right. if they're not generic drugs right mm -hmm. um, the the I guess the key the key thing to uh, to remember about the VA is that the VA is not a a health insurance company it is a health care provider right so uh, if if uh, to to qualify uh, for for anything other than combat related uh, 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 care, mm -hmm. it, it all is based on your income. They have eight different levels of uh, of qualifications to right. uh, come to the VA clinic. Of mm -hmm. course, uh, it's it's uh, for veterans who have a who have uh, income where they just you know live off of Social Security or and, and their Social Security isn't enough then they'll qualify for possibly full care. Right. And then uh, and, and another, another uh, caveat to the, to the uh, service connected. If, if a veteran is 50% or greater on his service connected disabilities, mm -hmm. he's got free health care from, from now on. I see. Because, I mean, if he's 50% disabled, then uh, he sh he, the VA is going to take care of him. Right. For, uh, for everything. Renee, you touched on this a moment ago. You, you said you were talking about the monetary side and the care side. Right. There might be some veterans that come to you that after they got out of the service, they, they went on and made themselves a nice living and, mm -hmm. you know, got themselves a nest egg. And they might come to you and say, hey, I don't need the money. Right. But that's not really the point. The point is that they, uh, they need to come see you to get the paperwork to get the health care. Right, going, for the right? health care. Uh, I, and, 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 and being a veteran myself of uh, mm -hmm. Iraq and Afghanistan, I kind of felt this when I first got out. I didn't need the VA. I'm fine. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, once I did the physical, they found out I wasn't as fine as I thought I was. Right. <laughs> but anyway, I, I have veterans who, who were in combat areas that feel that they don't need it, that it's, it's, it's for people who are seriously hurt, and that's not the case. It is, it is good to go ahead and, and uh, get into the VA system because I, have, I do have veterans who, like you, like you mentioned, they made a great living. Uh, and they were, you know, like ma mainly. Well, I don't want to put down any particular industry, but they mm -hmm. were doing very well. Mm -hmm. And then uh, s uh, something as as uh, little as a stroke mm -hmm. comes along, and they right. can no longer do that job anymore. Exactly. If if they were in the VA system and were taken to a hospital and mentioned anyone mentioned that they were a veteran then chances are the VA will pick up the tab depending on whether or not that veteran can afford to pay for it or not. And if a veteran is making good money and lives great and then all of a sudden he's not making anything, mm -hmm. the VA is there, I guess, kind of like uh, to catch veterans and help right. them out right. when they really, really need it. Now, the, the important word is there when they really, really need it. <laughs> right, right. You and I were talking earlier about a situation that was close to me that we'll just use as an example, say a veteran, a World War II veteran, who now finds himself, say, in assisted living or in a nursing home, uh, you know, not at a VA hospital, but in a private nursing right. home of some sort. Um, as, as long as, it, if they served in wartime and can produce their honorable discharge and, and all the, the proper paperwork and all of that, 
they have benefits coming uh, according to their income, and a lot of time their income might only be Social Security, right. maybe a few little investments on the side or something like that. Uh, but according to their income, uh, they have benefits coming that they might not even know about that they just need to apply for. Yes, they do. Uh, they have uh, a regular pension I mentioned, but mm -hmm. then the pension also there is a special monthly pension. Uh, s special monthly, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, pension, that's what right. it's called, I'm sorry. Right. Uh, and uh, it's for situations such as that where a veteran finds themselves where they were living at home, they were fine and everything like that, and they were living great, and now they find themselves needing to go into a nursing home or assisted living. Then they can apply for a special uh, monthly pension, right. which will help pay for that uh, aid in attendance, which aid in attendance doesn't necessarily mean that you have to go to an assisted living. For instance, if you have a parent uh, coming to live with you, mm -hmm. and that parent, uh, well, a parent of a, uh, a spouse of a veteran, let me put it that right. way, uh -huh. is coming to live with you, and that uh, the, 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 the veteran or the spouse requires some kind of uh, uh, extra care mm -hmm. uh, that they can't really take care of themselves, themselves fully then they can put in for uh, aid and attendance to where they'll get an extra little, a little extra money in their, in their uh, pension mm -hmm. to uh, alleviate or to either hire somebody to come in and assist them or to give uh, a veteran's uh, family members a little uh, extra money to, for, the, for the assistance, basically because somebody's caring for that individual, Right. what it comes down to. And if that veteran, in the case that we were talking about with, 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 with uh, a personal situation with a uh, with, with relative of mine, uh, if that veteran passes away mm -hmm. and they have a surviving spouse, in this, right. in this case right. that we were talking about, a surviving widow, uh, it's an, just another case of filing other paperwork for that widow to get benefits. Right, right. You just uh, there's, there's a different, uh, there, there's a, a form 534. Mm -hmm. It's a widow's pension. Mm -hmm. Also, that, uh, one of the things that we need to, that's important for veterans to do, and veterans need to do this because they need to do it for their families. Mm -hmm. And that is, if they're, if, 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 because uh, there, there's what they call presumptive disabilities that you can get for, be, for being in certain areas right. of combat. For instance, uh, there's uh, Vietnam, the Agent Orange issue. Everybody's heard about that. Exactly. They just added three more disabilities to that, if you keep track right. of that. One of those is diabetes, I know, right? Well, diabetes has been on there it's since, been on I there believe, a long time. like 1995 or something like that. Exactly. But, uh, mm -hmm. uh, one, of, one of them is, uh, is uh, oh, I can't remember exactly the name okay. of it, but it's, it has to do with something with the uh, heart condition and right. also, uh, well, anyway, it's other disabilities that they can actually go to va.gov and see what they are. Right. Uh, and uh, if, if they are covered or, or they have these disabilities and they have them recorded, they're service connected for it, and they happen to, to like you mentioned, pass, mm -hmm. then the spouse is actually covered because then she'll get, because there's, there's for, for spouses, or, uh, there's, there's DIC and then there's also uh, a, a widow's pension. A widow's pension, just like uh, compensation pension and mm -hmm. for a veteran, a widow's pension is based on the income, whereas right. A DIC is based on the veteran dying from something that was service connected. For instance, like I mentioned earlier, Agent Orange. Agent mm -hmm. Orange causes diabetes. They have diabetes causes heart conditions. Right. A veteran dies of a heart attack because of, and, and it states that the doctor feels that the reason why he died from this heart attack was because of the diabetes. Right. Made it worse. Then that spouse is covered with DIC right. and gets a, a, a a lot more benefits than if, if she were just receiving a widow's pension. Because as I understand it, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, if you had boots on the ground in Vietnam, mm -hmm. you are considered to have been affected by Agent Orange. One day, it doesn't matter. You can, I, have a, I have a veteran that flew in uh, for one day and uh, they said, you don't have enough time in service mm -hmm. to stay here. You got to go home. Right. So he had to turn around and leave. Mm -hmm. He was there for one day because right. he left the next morning. Uh -huh. He was there for one day right. and he left. So therefore, he qualifies. Qualifies. Now that also, mm -hmm. uh, for they have what they call blue and brown water navy. Brown water navy is the, the like uh, the John Kerry. He drove mm -hmm. his uh, gunboat in and out of the uh, waterways there. Mm -hmm. So he is considered in the, the brown water navy. Right. Okay. If a, a small craft from a larger ship came over, dropped its gate, 
and people got out mm -hmm. and let's say you know went and bought a, a Mai Tai or something and mm -hmm. got back on the ship. Well, mm -hmm. then they're considered being there also, I even see. though they spent 99% of their time on the ship itself. If they docked right. and went ashore, right. then they qualify for it also. Right, folks. This, this is this is a this is taxpayer money that we're talking about. It, you know. I don't want to get political here, but it doesn't need to stay in the government coffers. It needs to go no. to the people who deserve it, yes, and those sir. are the veterans who have defended our country. Right. I want to touch on, we've got about uh, six or seven minutes left, and we talked about this the other day when we were visiting. Uh, PTSD is certainly mm. uh, an issue, post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, that has come uh, out of, I guess, every war, uh, Vietnam, uh, certainly uh, Iraq, Afghanistan, and it's a situation that a lot of veterans don't like to talk about because mm -hmm. it, there's an implication there that there's a weakness there. Right. I had a veteran on just a few weeks ago who had been diagnosed with PTSD and his message to our viewers was uh, don't, don't, don't be a hero. If you think you're suffering from it, go get help. Right. And they're you want to say already, the same thing. They're, they're already heroes. They don't have to exactly. be a hero because they're already right. heroes. They've done something that, uh, that, uh, that uh, well, very few people want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, they did it. They, they volunteered uh, for the new service now. They volunteered to go in there. For those people who were drafted, well, then, of course, you know, I didn't want to be here. You know, it gets pretty, pretty rough that way, too. But if, uh, if you feel, if a veteran feels that they're, they're uh, suffering from PTSD, and they can go to VA.gov and see what the different uh, symptoms are, mm -hmm. uh, they, can, they can go to the, to the uh, VA clinic and request to see uh, a social worker. Mm -hmm. And a social worker, you just go in there, and, and her name is Teresa Cannon. She's, she works over there at the, at the clinic. Mm -hmm. uh, me and her kind of work close together because if she finds that, you know, maybe this person needs to put in for it, she'll, she'll send them over to me. And if I get a veteran in there who, and, and I have gotten them in there that, that don't realize they have it and I see it, and I tell them if they wish to go over there, they can. If not, because you can't force somebody to, to do that. Right. They can go over there and they can discuss it with her and then, see and get them started getting treatment uh, for that uh, but anyway they can go over to the VA clinic and uh, request to see uh, the social worker or request to see a psychologist which if they ask for that they'll wind up seeing Teresa either way mm -hmm. and let's say for instance they're already in the VA system and they add an appointment they can actually let their primary caregiver there know that you know I feel you know whatever Mm -hmm. And then uh, they will recommend they see a psychologist, psychiatrist either also. And one and reason this is important, mm -hmm. and I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. I want no, you to go on with that thought, is that PTSD, while it's a psychological disorder, it can also lead to physical disabilities, yes. many physical disabilities, it, it and indeed it does. It could. It could, it could, uh, it could lead to, uh, well, in, in some cases, uh, any kind of real stress on your body can lead to right. physical manifestation, manifestation right. like that. I'm not a doctor, so I can't really diagnose or say exactly what it, it would cause. Well, I don't think but there's a doctor anywhere that would <laughs> deny that. that uh, it causes some, some the, like, yeah. uh, one, one, of the, one of the things that I've seen was, uh, was uh, that, that uh, it's been put in there, that, that hypertension. Right. Uh -huh. But it, it's not guaranteed that that's the cause of it. Uh, what I wanted to say about PTSD mm -hmm. is that there is more than one way to suffer from PTSD. It is not as necessarily a combat-related issue. Uh, there's, there's, if you were in service and uh, 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 saw an accident mm -hmm. while you were in service, a, a, a jeep, well, they don't have jeeps no more, mm -hmm. Humvee flips over and right. something happens or a, a mechanized vehicle falls off a cliff, which is an exact, I do have a claim like that. and. Right. and it, it's not really something I want to describe, right. but this guy had saw that and mm -hmm. went down to assist, and he suffers from PTSD because of that night. Right. So it's not, and then there's also you know uh, other other traumas such as uh, sexual trauma. Mm -hmm. uh, if if uh, if uh, something happened to somebody while they were in the service, right. then they can and they can actually bring that up as uh, as part of PTSD also. Right. So there's a wide range there right. of that. You talked about one individual that came to you and said that, that they believed that they would not be alive right. had it not right. been for a group session that's offered by your local yes, that Teresa yes. offers with right. the local clinic. Too. Teresa Cannon, yes. This is a Vietnam veteran, mm -hmm. and an incident happened that uh, caused him to, uh, to suffer. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, there was his, his, he feels that his actions or reactions weren't good enough 
and uh, he suffers from PTSD as well as depression. He told me, Sarge, if it wasn't for that group, I wouldn't be here right now. Right. Because those guys know where I'm coming from, and they've been there too, and I can relate with those. So, and uh, I can honestly say that's probably one of the reasons why I have this job is because I, I can talk to people who, who, who I can relate with. Right. So it certainly is, is something that people don't need to ignore and people need to, to understand. And, and uh, the uh, Texas Veterans Commission and, and the clinic right here on Rock Prairie Road is available to help. I was looking at some numbers that were really incredible. That um, This is from the Veterans Administration website. There are some 25 million veterans living in the U.S. today. But that number pales in comparison to the some 70 million that are potentially eligible for VA benefits when you include veterans, family members, mm -hmm. and survivors. And an awful lot of those don't know about what they're entitled to. Right. I did want to mention that we do have one more counselor. He, mm -hmm. he works for the county, the Brazos right. County. Each county has a veteran service officer. We do have a, uh, a counselor there in, uh, in uh, downtown by the name of Johnny Yepes. He also, he's there for, he's there only three days a week, Vietnam veteran. And uh, he's he's there to serve too. If they can't make it up to Rock Prairie, at least they they can go down to uh, to the county office there and request to see a veteran service officer there. Right, right. Um, before we leave, we got a couple of minutes left. I want to make sure that people know the uh, the address and the telephone number. I don't know whether we can put it up on the screen or not, but uh, again, it's uh, 1651 Rock Prairie, and it's right across the street from the uh, College Station Medical Center, right there on the first floor. Suite uh, 100, right across yes. the street from the medical center, and uh, the phone number uh, it's in the book six eight zero zero three six one, and uh, uh, there's so much more that we could talk about about the service that it provides, but uh, I think that we've told people uh, who don't know that it exists that it does, mm -hmm. and people who do know that it exists a little bit about what you do, and I want to thank you for what you do because you provide a service just as important now as you did when your boots were on the ground when you were serving as a United States yeah. Marine. Thank you. Thank indeed, you. indeed. Thank you, Renee. Thank you for your service and thank you for being with us. Yes, sir. Thank you. So there you have an overview of what is available to veterans right here in the Brazos Valley. Many veterans are taking advantage of the benefits that they have rightly earned, but there are certainly many others out there who have learned something today that they did not know before. We thank Rene Ramirez not only for his service to his country, but to his daily service to fellow veterans at the local VA clinic on Rock Prairie Road in College Station. Join us next week. I'm Tom Turbeville. This is Veterans of the Valley.